Hey everybody, so today I'd just like to provide a little bit of additional evidence to my argument that I made yesterday that the Touch Bar MacBook is the worst MacBook of all time. In that video, I showcase some objective evidence under the microscope, in the schematic, and in the board views, and I show you why it is that the Touch Bar MacBook has more design flaws than just about any other MacBook that's ever come out, and how these come to be. Now, the thing is, you may not trust me. Even if I show you this objective evidence, you may not think I'm a trustworthy source when I say that the Touch Bar MacBook is one of the worst MacBooks of all time, which is why I'd like to offer you a slightly less biased source. Apple.com. Apple.com wants to sell you a MacBook. So I think that they are a little bit more biased towards telling you something that is pro-Apple than I am. Yet when you go to Apple.com and you scroll down, you'll notice that they make one of the best arguments that could have ever been made for why the Touch Bar MacBook is the worst MacBook of all time. Allow me to explain. A year ago, they came out with a keyboard extended warranty program to address complaints over letters or characters that repeat unexpectedly, letters or characters that do not appear, and keys that feel sticky or do not respond in a consistent manner. And remember, as always, this only occurred to a small percentage of keyboards, a small percentage of users, a very small number. Now, this was a very bad keyboard. For those who have not been watching for a while, there are lots of sources that you could read up on that go over how this keyboard is worse than older models and how they have a much higher failure rate. And many thought, look, Apple did the right thing. They released an extended warranty program. They covered it, right? We're done. No, we're not, because they're still producing that computer to this day. So this over here is their support program for these machines. And it used to be that this simply read up to 2018. So most people would have figured, okay, they know that they made keyboards that were bad in the past on these laptops. They knew they were defective. They knew they were designed improperly, but they fixed it, right? The new ones are not designed the same, right? Wrong. Because if you look over here, you'll see that they are including the 2019 MacBook Pro in there, meaning that they know that the new MacBook Pro's keyboard is designed so crappily that it has to be included in this uh, recall extended warranty program over here. So if you go to apple.com and you were to buy any one of these machines, not last year, not a refurbished model, not an off-lease model, not some clearance model, but the new models that are being manufactured right now, they are included in this program because Apple knows that they are such piles of crap that they should be included in this program for defective products. Now, imagine if that same standard that is being applied to Apple were applied to us. Imagine if I knew after reviewing the Quick 861DW that they had a serious design flaw that caused a high defect rate. And I acknowledged on my website, yes, we know that there is a defect rate in these. We know that they were designed improperly but I'm gonna keep selling them to you. Imagine if with, when it comes to repair services, if after all the videos I've done on how reballing is garbage and re reflowing is not going to actually fix your dead GPU, that I still offered it as a service and I still took people's money. After publishing to my website, reflowing does not work, this is a scam, do not pay people that promise that as a long-term repair, that I started offering it as a long-term repair and taking people's money. I would be in trouble if I did that. I could potentially, I could get into legal trouble if I did that, and I would lose a lot of social trust and uh, goodwill with my customers because they would see me as a scammer. Lewis is knowingly selling defective merchandise. Lewis is knowingly performing repairs that he knows is not going to last. I'm not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that in your repair shop. And even if you're in a different industry, you are not allowed to act with those ethics. But for some reason, when it comes to Apple, universality gets thrown out the window. And this is what bothers me. Apple is one of the only companies that I know of on earth in this industry that can acknowledge that their product has a design flaw and defect, then continue to design their products with that same design flaw and defect, acknowledge it on their own website, and still demand over $1,800 for a device that has eight effing gigabytes of RAM in 2019. That this, I, I have no words for this. I, I, I don't know what to say at this point. This, if you go to apple.com slash support, you will see that they are knowingly selling a product that is defective. And they are so arrogant that rather than go back to the drawing board and redesign the keyboard so that it stops failing on people, they are just going to continue selling it and deal with the fallout as it occurs. Because again, remember, if you've had this problem, it's only a small percentage. And they have so little respect for that small percentage of users that they are not even going to redesign it. They are not even going to change what it is they're selling you when you give them $2,000. This keyboard is included on their $3,000 MacBooks. You can put this keyboard into a six or $7,000 MacBook if you so configure it that way, and it's still going to fail. 
and they don't care because you're going to buy it anyway because they're still going to get your money. So the question I have for you is, are you still going to give them your money? That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.